Welcome to the Knit Song Podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, crochet, sewing, yarn dyeing, and all kinds of other crafts. My name is Audrey, and I host this little shindig here. Uh, and this is our first episode back in a while. I think this is number 10, and there has been a long break in between, so I'm super excited to be back talking with you today and sharing with you today. Uh, I'll put some info about the podcast in the description box below. On Instagram, I am I Knit a Little Song, and on Ravelry, I'm Cat Knits. And I'll spell that in the description box because it's spelled like the Hunger Games, but knitting. And uh, we also have a new Ravelry group on the on Ravelry, and it's called the Knit Song Podcast group. And currently, we only have an introductions thread, but I would love for you to hop on over there, sign up, and introduce yourself. Uh, I think I'm going to jump right into our first giveaway, which was promised last podcast, and I'm super excited to talk about that. Uh, so the first giveaway that we did here at the podcast was we open, I opened the introduction thread, and I asked people to just come introduce themselves, join the group, and share what their favorite type of project to knit or crochet would be, and also to share maybe a favorite knitting snack or just things they like to do or watch while they're knitting just to get to know people in the community a little bit better that are enjoying the podcast. So it was so much fun to read the different uh, introductions and I uh, tried to respond to all of them, but I think a few of them, the later ones I didn't get to yet, but I've just enjoyed reading them all and it's been so fun to meet you and just share what you're doing and I love the projects that were posted and it was so fun to hear all the different things that people uh, prefer to knit. Uh, you know, some people are really just love socks and some people, it's so fun to see just the variety of, I don't know, preferences that we all have as creators. It's really fun. So I went in and I used a number, a random, a random number picker and it picked post number nine, which is as the flowers in May. And I believe it's, her name is Esther. So congratulations, Esther. I'm going to be sending you a 100 gram skein of my hand dyed yarn. And the colorway that I have picked for you is da -na 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 -da -na, this one right here. So it is kind of a pinky, mauvey, purpley, gray mix. And I hope you like it. And uh, feel free to uh, contact me, private message me on Ravelry and give me your contact info. And then I'm going to package this up for you and maybe put some goodies in there and say thank you so much for joining the Ravelry group and congrats on winning a free skein of yarn. So yay, Esther, and yay, everyone who joined the group and, and talked. So that was a lot of fun. So feel free to hop on over if you haven't introduced yourself yet and you would like to. Uh, I would love to meet you. So thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Um, it's been a while since I've done this. So I apologize for my awkward stammering because you really do get out of the, the groove of recording videos. And it's only been like a month and a half, but it's like forever it feels. So yeah, that was our first giveaway. Uh, I think the next thing I will talk about is something I'm actually wearing. It's a finished object and I finished my sun shower cardigan and this is it. I love the color. I love the yarn. You can see it's kind of, it's an Andy Satterland pattern. I joined the inside number 23 Andy sat along is what Katie, the host, called it. And I picked this pattern. It was a, a knit along that ran from January to March. And I just finished this. It's June something or other. And I just finished this this week. So <laughs> moving a little slow this year, I think I am. But I'm happy I finished it. And I'm thankful to Katie for introducing me to such a great designer. I love the the different patterns that Andy Satterland has done. So I think I enjoyed this one so much, even though it took me a long time. Uh, it wasn't because of the pattern or not liking the project. It was just work and keeping me really busy. So uh, I think I definitely want to knit another Andy Satterland pattern. But I will stand up and show you a couple of the finished details. So this is what, it's kind of a short bolero crop style, and it's got this cool lace, like, I don't know if this is, I don't, I don't think it's horseshoe. It's like a cool, 
probably her own design pattern of lace. And I picked some contrasting buttons that have little roses on them, and I thought that was kind of fun. I didn't clip all the ends for um, the buttons because I'm not sure I like the super high contrast of the dark blue and the white, but I also kind of like it, and so I'm not sure if I'm going to keep those on. So what I did is I left, I tied on the buttons, and then left a little, you can see, a little a sprig of yarn big enough that I could like untie it if I want to change the buttons without having to clip into it and risk cutting a stitch, which I totally almost did. I was cutting and weaving in my ends and because of the holes in the lace, I truly put my scissors through one of these and almost accidentally cut through the sweater that it took six months to knit. And I almost, I laughed and I almost cried all at the same time, but thankfully, crisis averted. It's all whole and in one piece. Ends are woven in. I haven't blocked it. I will confess it's a little smaller than I thought it would be and so I'm hoping that when I block it it might expand and stretch out a little bit more. So yeah so that's it. I love the button band and the ribbing and it's just really comfortable to wear so yay for finished objects. I finally got a bigger finished object than just a sock or something small so yay. Um, I think that's almost all for finished. That's definitely it for finished knit objects. I did finish uh, some new colorways of yarn that I dyed up. I think I've shown most of these. Ah, this one is new. So these two are sister colorways that I've been working on, and this one is mostly greens, purples, kind of tan and just all different kinds of things that are happening and I really enjoyed this one and to me it kind of reminded me I don't know I want to say Georgia O'Keeffe who painted lots of flowers like close up with watercolor this kind of reminds me of a couple of Georgia O'Keeffe paintings but I don't know what to call it and I don't know if this is one I would repeat because I haven't knit it up and I like to knit things up before I try them again because some variegated yarns just the way that you lay color is either pleasing to the eye or it's not and that's all in the eye of the beholder but I'm a little bit picky about the way that color lays out when you knit it so I'm going to knit this sample up and see how it looks actually in a knit object and then maybe dye it up again but it was definitely a fun process. I took some of these same techniques and added some more color and I found something I like even more which is this and I am just really excited about this because you can see there's just tons of multiple shades of purple that came out and green and mauve and I don't know golden almost but this one really has I don't know, this one really reminds me even more of Georgia O'Keeffe, but almost of some of like Monet's colors in um, just some of the way he does shadows and sky and just impressionism in general. It just has a lot of those nice tones in it. And I'm super excited to knit this up and see how this color lays out. Yay! So that's a great finished object that I'm happy about. I just love that section. Oh my gosh. And Fun story, I had a helper dyeing this yarn up. My mom actually came out to visit, which was super awesome. Hi mom, if you're watching. And spent a week with us out here and it was really, really fun to actually show her um, how I dye up yarn and, and just have a buddy with me in that process and helping me kind of make some color choices. So we did this together and it was tons of fun. So yeah, so these are my two finished objects as far as new colors. Ooh, they look good together. That could be interesting. Hmm. Project ideas are being born. Okay, I like those two together a lot. Uh, yeah, so those are the only things that I finished. Let me, before I get into work, works in progress, let me talk about my new location. I am in a different room and you're probably thinking, where are you? If you've watched previous episodes. Um, this is my new office slash sewing room slash creative knitting space. So I'm super excited. Uh, it's kind of a mess and the camera is 
not feeling super sturdy in its holster today, so I think I'm not going to do an office tour yet. I'm still deciding how to use some of the cabinet space and just the whole room in general. But the centerpiece of this room, my mom, who I mentioned just came out with us, uh, we actually all, my husband, my mom, and I all drove back together uh, from my brother-in-law's graduation a couple weeks ago and we decided that we would rent an SUV big enough to bring back a very special piece of furniture. So um, I've mentioned my grandma before many times on the podcast, I think. She's the one who taught me to sew and she and my mom and I spent a lot of time knitting and crocheting and crafting and hanging out together and just sharing um, the different, though basically they were the main people that I always shared my creative work with and they made me appreciate they were the main appreciators of it besides myself so very special relationship with my grandma she passed away about five years ago now already which is it's always crazy when you look back and you're missing loved ones and you can't believe how long it's been since you've actually seen them it's always crazy um anyway uh I was blessed enough and super grateful to inherit her sewing desk where uh, she taught me how to knit and uh, it's just a really, really special piece of furniture. I have so, so, so many good memories with her standing behind her at the desk trying to figure out how what she was doing and she would be teaching me and then sitting at the desk and she would teach me how to sew um, from sewing memories all the way to like, I mean, this is just where she stored obviously all of her pins and measure tape and everything so every time we needed something like that I would run up and go to the sewing room and open these drawers and get things out and so I just have so many memories from so many different eras of my life with her and this desk and so it's so so special to have it in our new house because it's been fun to have a new house and you know have um you know I don't know we didn't buy a lot of new furniture, but it's fun to kind of be in a new place. But it's so special to have something old and something that's treasured and something that has memories already connotated with it in your new home. So as we make new memories, it's so fun to have Grandma's desk here. So I actually will stand aside and show a little bit of her desk. You can see my messy floor. But it's an old... I don't know what the brand, this went with an Elna sewing machine that she bought and these panels fold in and her sewing machine actually fit in the, um, the hole and could spring down and actually could go away and then you could turn it into a desk. It's super cool. Mine doesn't fit perfectly in there so we have like a temporary piece of cardboard um, holding that place and then my sewing machine on top. But I think what I'd like to do is put like a plate of glass over it so it's just more sturdy and it looks prettier than cardboard. Um, yeah, and it's so exciting. And my husband was super excited too because he knows he also had a good relationship with my grandma and is so excited that I can have this here. But he was also excited that I finally have a place to store all my junk, all of my knitting uh, doodads, my sewing doodads, and just all my buttons and like just everything. I actually decided to make um, some of these drawers knitting related and these are sewing related. So all of my knitting needles, my crochet hooks now actually have a home, which is crazy exciting. And as you can see, I just have a fold chair here, but I, I need to pick a new one. But I'm super excited. And let me see if I can get this. This camera is being really fiddly today. But yeah, so I'm super excited and honored to have this desk here and just all the memories that um, that uh, come with it. So super, super excited about that. Uh, so that would be my biggest new thing that I have acquired. <laughs> um, but I do have a couple other things that I grabbed in uh, San Francisco. I was there super quick. Uh, for my brother's, my brother-in-law's graduation uh, from college, and whoops, sorry about that. And uh, while I was there, I was there really quickly, but I made time to find my way to a one of my favorite yarn stores. It's called Fashion Knit, and if you are in the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area, and you are familiar with Walnut Creek 
It's actually uh, on Ignacio Valley Boulevard, and it's this cute little, beautifully uh, organized yarn shop, and it's just so fun. I uh, this time I went in and met John, who was the I don't think he, he's not the owner, but he was the patron of the shop that day. You know, he was the person working the counter, and had so much fun talking with him and just talking about yarn and life and musicals and things that I, because I'm a music teacher and, you know, just directing and just all kinds of fun stuff. He was just so personable and fun to chat with. And, uh, yeah, I just had a great time just being in a yarn shop. Uh, I haven't found too many out here in the new area that we are, but I mean, it's always nice, you know, to return to the yarn shops that you are familiar with there's just positive memories and you just love you know how their shop is organized and it's just so fun to go back so that's actually where my mom bought me this um, the yarn that was for this sweater and I should put that in the pro the my I need to I, okay side note whoop <laughs> um, one second I'll get back to the acquisitions and things that I bought but I need to work on my rabbit ma side note to the side note learn how to speak. <laughs> um, but I need to learn to update my project page on Ravelry much more. It's like nothing. And I really want to work on that this summer. So just saying, I will be posting details about this finished product in my Ravelry page. And I will mention the yarn and the gauge and everything in there. So side note ended. This message has been brought to you by an Audrey who's trying to get organized. Okay, back to our scheduled programming. So I go into the shop, chat with John. Uh, my husband was getting a haircut at the time down the street. He came in and met, a, met up with us and the three of us talked for a long time and just had a great time talking about yarn dyeing and just all the kind of fun stuff that you talk about with people who also love knitting and yarn and all that stuff. Uh, so I got to pick a couple things out and I had a really hard time choosing because they have such a great repertoire of yarns and I chose one of the owners hand knit I'm sorry hand dyed colorways which is this lovely skein I'm so excited to knit this up I don't know it's sock yarn it's a sock yarn weight it's fingering weight and it's 80% merino 20% nylon which is actually my favorite blend that I've found to knit with and to dye on I really like 80-20. Um, and it's really interesting. She doesn't do any dye lots. So the owner of the shop, her, both about 50% of her shop is her own hand dyed yarn, which I thought was really cool. Um, and she doesn't, he said that she doesn't do dye lots. She does once in a lifetime, like never to be replicated, once in a lifetime, come and get it, yarns. And she'll do about six skeins at the time. So it's really cool because that could be, I guess, frustrating if you're trying to do a larger project and wanted to repeat, but I think it's kind of cool because each one is a limited edition. So there were multiples of each one. I could have bought more, but I think I just wanted one of these. And it's got beautiful um, corals, pinks, peaches, grays, and tans. Oh, I love this yarn. I can't wait to knit with it. Um, and this is her label right here. I think they have a website too, but really cool shop really cool yarn nice people I highly enjoy their business so um, yeah personal story about why I picked this one would be when I was four and I know it's weird I have like a really good memory but I remember my fourth birthday party I remember my parents were there my grandparents were there and I remember my grandpa gave me a Barbie doll and it was I think my first Barbie doll but it wasn't just Barbie, it was a Cinderella Barbie. And it was Cinderella in her work clothes, not in her ball gown. It was definitely the Disney version of her. And if you're familiar with the Disney Cinderella in her work clothes, it was all of these colors. She had like a tan dress with a coral apron and like gray black shoes, gray blouse or something like that. And I loved that Barbie so much that it got me into the world of all the different Barbies in the 80s when I was a kid. But uh, I have such fond memories of that doll and that 
you know, my grandpa, of course. So it's like really good memories and just happy thoughts when I think of these colors together. And as soon as I saw it, it's crazy. I literally thought, oh, that's like my Cinderella Barbie for my fourth birthday. And I just knew I had to have this because these colors just make me really, really happy. So yeah, this is one thing that I bought. Another thing, I have never been granted yet, or never have I granted myself the happy experience of knitting with Malabrigo yarn. And I've heard from different podcasters, um, Legacy Knits podcast, Chelsea and Sue, they're some of my favorite, favorite, favorite podcasters to watch, um, talk about Malabrigo. And I've seen it on, who else's podcast did I see it on? But I've seen it just heard it praised, seen it beautifully knitted up, and I really wanted to get my hands on some. And they had a good amount of Malabrigo yarn there, and this is what I picked. Oh, I love it. Even in the camera, it just shows up so beautiful. Woohoo! It's reds and copper and brown and gray and just earth tone craziness. It's just beautiful. Oh! I could just talk about this one forever, but I love it so much. Um, yeah, this is beautiful. And this is whoop, Malabrigo, and it is dial, uh, it's 064 Cheese Pass. And it is Pure Superwash Merino Wool, 100 grams, and it is Arroyo. I guess that's their base but I am thrilled. I love it. It's just, it catches, the colors just catch the light in so many different ways. Ah, <sighs> hmm. I'm so excited about this one too. So yeah, those are my two purchases uh, in uh, at Fashion Knit at the yarn store there. So hopefully I'll do some more yarn shopping locally, but right now, I'm sticking to the shops that I know for some reason. So yeah. All right. Well, time for works in progress. And I actually have a really good one. Um, well, which one should I start with? I will start with this one. And actually, gosh, I'm such a space case today. It's being hot housed in and living in, as people say, my a new uh, finished object. And it's a uh, project bag that I sewed up for this project specifically. And I love the blue. I don't think I showed this because I don't think I m had made this last time I podcasted. But I had so much fun. I picked like a turquoise uh, zipper that's not really quite in this pattern much because really if you get close, this is actually a dark green. But I just love the turquoise zipper with this kind of French country fabric. And sorry, my voice is doing weird things today. Um, don't know why. But I lined it with like a pink fabric inside and I love it. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so the work in progress inside of my new little project bag is knit on my hand dyed yarn that I, my favorite colorway that I've ever done, I think. It changes uh, depending on my mood. But it is in, this is the colorway. I have not named it yet. It's turquoise and neon green and blue and dark green and all kinds of good stuff. Um, this is what it looks like in a skein. And I showed this on a couple of other podcasts or episodes, but I love this one. Um, and this yarn board, I don't know what I'm doing with this. I just needed something that held, held yarn in my new office. And so I was like, I'll just put it on the bulletin board. Anyway, Work in progress. I'm using this yarn on uh, three millimeter needles, circulars, to knit a shawl and I'm doing my own thing. I'm kind of making my own pattern. I would love to actually be able to write this one down as my first pattern. And that was my plan and I think I'm going to be able to do it, but oh my goodness, I did some funky things with this so it's going to be it's not super hard to knit, but the construction is a little weird. So I'll show you what I have so far. Oops, I did not finish a row. Naughty me. Now I can't really splay it all out. Um, bad, bad, 
person I am. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, uh, this is what I have so far, and it's going to be a triangular shawl. I love it so much. Sorry. I squeal when I get excited about yarn. And this is kind of the pattern so far. So it's got like a garter eyelet thing happening. So it's on both sides that it's garter. And then a stockinette section, some rib lace here. And then I'm going to go back and I think I do more of this. But uh, yeah, it is coming out really nicely. And I think I'm going to try and do a full wingspan shawl. Like, I want this baby to get big and be wrap aroundy. So, um, I'm super excited about this and I really just love the way that it's knitting up. I'm really happy with how the color is laying out. Like I mentioned, um, I, with variegated yarns, like sometimes the color pools in pleasing ways, sometimes it doesn't. And it's like really, I like to see how it lays out. And so I'm really happy with how the color is laying out right here. It's not too much of any color at one place. There's just delicate like pops of those colors. And I'm really happy with that. So that helps me know that that is a technique that I want to use. Here is the center of it and the other edge. Now I mentioned that the construction is weird. I originally uh, cast this on on a road trip. Now, I won't go all into it, but part of the reason, in fact, 99.9% .9 of the reason uh, why I haven't podcasted for a while is uh, my job involves a lot of planning of events and concerts and travel. So it's a weird combination. And I basically, since the last podcast, went from musical to musical to concert to concert to concert and then to a trip that I had organized for school, for my job and just got back uh, had a family thing at the end of it real quick came back and here I am so it has been the weirdest whirlwind of a month and a half uh, it's been great but oh my goodness I've been so busy so I was in the car and I thought okay I'm going to cast something on with this yarn. And to treat myself to the road trip, I thought, okay, I'm going to make myself a new project bag, which I did right here, that goes with this color of yarn. So I kind of made this bag with this yarn in mind. And then I brought a skein of it. Excuse me. And then I decided I would just make something up in the car, which could have gone wrong. <laughs> but um, I decided to cast on a, like a crescent shawl. So my initial thought was a crescent shawl. And guess where I actually started the cast on? Right here. So I started, I cast on right here, and then I made this little triangle before I realized that I had cast on too many stitches for it to be a straight line. And then I just kept going. And so I made this triangle pattern here with this being the cast on edge and then ending here. And I finally decided to um, switch directions because I did not want this to be the bottom point. So I thought, well, what if I bound off this edge where I was at and then I picked up stitches along the cast on edge and then started to go this way. And I love what I got. So if I write this pattern down, I might just write it exactly how I did it because I don't know that you'd get the same effect. You probably could if you cast on here in the center and did more of a straight line you always when you cast on for like a triangle shawl you do get sometimes like a little lump but I got a full-on triangle and so I was like no 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 I'm gonna reshape this so if that makes sense great if not I'm sorry I don't know how to really explain that but yeah so I think I might write this pattern actually as I did it and cast it on, make the triangle, bind it off, pick up the stitches, and then knit this way with this bind off edge as the, the top. So yeah. Anyway, I am just so in love with this pattern that I'm kind of just making. It's really lacy and summery and springy, but I think it'll be big enough that it'll be kind of a bright thing to wear in the winter too. So I think I'm just super excited about it. 
So yeah, that is my work in progress. All right, do I have another one? Yes, I do. Um, here it is. Without further ado, here we go. In my other project bag, one of the first ones that I knit, it's a, I'm really in a shawl kick right now, <laughs> if you can't tell. Um, mm, green tea. It's so good. But I decided I wanted to cast on another triangle shawl a while ago, and I did this one with two different colorways of my hand dyed yarn, and it's kind of out there. It's really bright, but this is what I've got. Oops, that's the wrong side. This is what I've got. So this is the top. Again, I didn't finish the row. Oh my goodness, how embarrassing. But this is what it's kind of shaping up to look like. So here's the top, and the triangle is pointing towards the bottom, and this is kind of what I've got happening with color. And I really like it. It's really, it's bright, it's kind of bold, but it's a lot of fun, and I really enjoy knitting on it. I'm just doing a simple triangle recipe shawl with increases in the center and on the sides, and I'm enjoying it. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to keep going with the purple for a while and maybe fade it back into the green, but I'm not sure. So this is kind of a other little project I have going on. Um, I'm working on some sewing. I do have a work in progress, I guess, to show. It's a dress that, uh oh, I need the pattern. Hold on, I'll be right back. Just like the flash. Here it is. Okay, I grabbed this pattern. It was like $2 on sale for some reason the other day, and I grabbed it, and I was so excited because I would love to learn to make just plain, like, jersey drape dresses. Super comfortable, they look nice, and they look, I just really want to be able to make them. So, the fabric, I, instead of starting with jersey, because I have never sewed with a knit fabric before, and I know it's a little bit tricky, so I bought like a really soft cotton to do this uh, bee dress with, just to practice the skills, because um, I want to get comfortable with the pattern before I do it on jersey. So, what I have so far, I can actually just turn this around, it's on my dummy, <laughs> here she is. So I have this, it's a really pretty fabric, and I have the front and the back sewn together currently, and that's it. So I haven't done the, uh, the facing, I haven't done the sleeves yet, but this is what I've got so far, and it's hopefully going to look like this. So if I can get this to be a good first trial run, then I'm gonna go jersey crazy and I'm gonna get some gray and different types of uh, knit prints because I think this would be super, super comfortable. Uh, as a Californian who's adjusting to a mountain, um, uh, you know, I've mentioned many times on the podcast that like being in Utah in the mountains is like crazy for a Californian to adjust to winter. You can't wear flip flops all year round, which makes sense, but it's weird because I'm used to being able to wear flip-flops all year. Uh, you actually need shoes that cover your feet. You need a lot more knitwear, which is great. So I love that part of winter because it gives me more of a reason to knit. But, oh my word, uh, dressing is really difficult. Like, getting dressed for work in the winter is tricky because you have to have layers. You can't, uh, you have to be super covered up. Like, you'll be super cold if you're not. But then when you get to work, the heater's on. So then you don't want to be too warm because then you'll be uncomfortable all day. So this Californian is learning how to do it. And I thought a nice dress that I can do leggings with in the winter and then not have leggings in the summer would be like a great versatile pattern because it's kind of, you know, flowy and comfortable. It's not like committing to a sweater and thick corduroy pants to be warm. It's got a little bit more fluidity and I think it would be like a good fix, a good fit for multiple seasons here. So 
Hopefully, I'm gonna get really proficient at this pattern and be able to knock out a few of those before uh, the school year starts. So that would be really great. Uh, yeah, so those are kind of the things that I have as worked in progress. Let me check my notes here and see what I've got. Oh, so just general info and chit chat is uh, I've been watching some new podcasts that I've been enjoying and I thought I'd share them. Um, I have been on a Vulan Vine kick because I've been a fan of hers for the past couple years, but she's been podcasting since before then. So what I've been doing is I've been kind of catching up on her uh, earlier episodes and it's so much fun to watch Kristen. She's so talented, um, so nice, and I just enjoy her podcast a ton. But a new one that I actually found through Instagram, um, I think, oh boy, her, um, her name is Sharon, and on Instagram uh, I've liked some of her things and she's liked some of my things, and uh, it's been fun to get to know her a little bit. But I saw, I was looking at her pictures, and I saw that she has a podcast, and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. And so it's called SSK Yarners, and it's super good. And it's so cute because the names of the three ladies in it, the ones, the episodes I've seen, have Sharon, who is the one that I'm getting to know uh, from Instagram. Uh, and then I think the second lady is, second girl is Sherlyn, and then Karen. But it's so cute because the names of their, the first names of their, the, sorry, the first letters of their names are SSK, so Slip Slit Knit, so cute for a knitting podcast. And they're great. They're super neat uh, people and great knitters, and they go to different yarn stores and fiber places, and it's great. So if you've never seen SSK Yarners, check it out. It's, like, really fun to watch. So thank you, Sharon, for friending me on Instagram and or following me on Instagram and uh introducing me to that awesome podcast of yours. So that was awesome. That's been the newest one that I've been uh, watching. So yeah, um, I think that almost sums up kind of what I've been up to. I'm tossing around the idea of vlogging this summer because I have enjoyed doing this podcast so much. And I, my favorite part is honestly meeting you guys and like talking on Instagram, talking on the Ravelry group and just sharing what we're up to and just sharing, I don't know, like, I think it's just amazing how fulfilling it is to share something that you love doing with people who understand and like get how much you love it. Like when I show some of my friends and I love my friends, but it's so funny when I'll show them like what I'm knitting, like they're like, you spent how many hours doing that? You could buy a scarf. And I'm like, well, I know I could buy a scarf, but I want to make it, you know? And so it's just such a valuable thing, the knitting community and crochet community. And just, I just enjoy the community aspect, as I've said many times, but it's so awesome meeting you guys and sharing. Uh, and so all that to say, I want to get more consistent at putting videos out regularly. And I thought, this would be a really great month for me to practice by just doing some daily vlogging. And I think that might be something that I start. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think I would really like to do that. I think it would help me um, just to be more consistent with getting used to just constantly documenting things and posting them. Because I think that's really the consistency is where you get to really build relationships. And so I would love to do that. So you might be seeing some info about vlogs coming out soon. Uh, but other than that, I think I'm just going to try and really keep on working on projects and trying to just gain some speed and make up for time. Work this past six months was like insanely busy and one of the fastest years I've I feel like this was like the fastest and busiest and craziest year ever. <laughs> so I didn't get a lot of, I didn't get as much creative time in. And I think I would like to do that in the next month. And I think vlogging might help me to, to push me along with that because constantly documenting would be like really good for me to be doing. So, <laughs> yeah, I hope that made sense. It might not have, and that's okay. But 
yeah, uh, thanks so much for watching and tuning in, and I will hopefully see you soon. I'll put some info in the description box below. Like I said, please join the Ravelry group. I'd love to hear about your favorite thing to knit and make and or sew or whatever, and uh, yeah, just feel free to join uh, the group. So thanks so much. Have an awesome day, awesome week knitting and crocheting and making stuff, and yeah, have a great week. See ya. Bye.